Hello friends, welcome back to Heartscapes, where we're practicing the system of Reiki and growing abundant gardens at the intersection of self-reflection, spiritual practice, and social action. My name is Michaela, and I'm glad to have you with me back here today. Well, I'm back in the garden as I am a lot of the time these days in the springtime to share with you some updates um, on the homestead garden. I shared a short video earlier this morning implying that something exciting was going on today, at least as it relates to our gardening endeavors here at Heartscapes. And so I wanted to follow up with you on that. There are many ways to grow an abundant garden and a key input for that abundance has been missing from this homestead since last summer, but that changes today. So let's go over here and find out what I'm talking about. So friends, this new uh, endeavor, this new addition to the homestead has to do with what is in this box. Just a simple looking box. Perhaps you can guess what's inside. Maybe it's more clear if you see what the box is sitting on. This here is my new bees. And they are really ready to get out of this box. You can see one of their little feet coming out of the holes right there. So we are going to let them out of this box. This is a, what's called a nuke, a nucleus. It contains, oh, several hundred bees and a queen. And it will be the foundation of my new hive. And we are going to let them out right now. They're going to get oriented to this space and then at about seven o'clock tonight we will install them in the hive so let's let them out and then we'll go back over to the arbor and talk a little bit more about this project they are ready to come out of this box and get oriented to their new home I don't know if you can see them here. They're starting to, to fly in circles. This is their orienting dance. They are in a completely new place. When they went into that box, they were at Tazier Apiary here in Davis. For you local folks, get your bees on at Tazier. And now they're here in my backyard and they are trying to figure out where they are. And so they're gonna orient um, probably for the next couple hours uh, until it starts getting dark and then they'll start returning to this box at which time I will open the box and install the frames into their new hive. So I'm gonna let them do this work of orienting and I'm gonna take you back over to the arbor right over there and we'll talk about it. Hang tight. <sighs> Friends, it is so good to see bees flying above my garden again. Of course, there's bees here all the time from other hives in the area, and there's a wide variety of native bees that live here as well. But um, I haven't had a hive here since last summer when my first hive um, unfortunately failed and all of my baby bees died. It was a very sad thing, but my beekeeping mentor assured me that now that I have lost a hive, I am a real beekeeper which is kind of a sad sentiment, but true in a certain way. Beekeeping is complex. There are many ways in which a hive can fail and uh, there's a lot to learn. And I am definitely very early in my learning journey. So that's a disclaimer. Please do not take anything that I share on these videos about beekeeping as instructional. I am absolutely just figuring out what the heck I am doing. So let me just tell you a little bit about uh, the journey so far for me and bees. Um, and then, uh, this evening when I install these babes in their new hive, um, I'll make a separate video and share that with you as well. So I got my first hive, actually the one that failed last summer was actually my second hive. I got the first one, um, probably about five or six years ago. Um, a beekeeper friend of mine had caught a swarm and, um, I came up with a bee box somewhere and we hastily installed it and off he went. And I knew nothing, absolutely nothing about keeping bees. 
Um, for example, I did not know that you need to check them regularly, that you need to open up the hive and see how they're doing. Um, look for certain indications of disease or mite infestation or um, any number of other issues that can happen with them. I did not know this. And so I let them be for quite some time and uh, eventually noticed that there was very little activity coming in and out of the hive, at which point I called my friend and he's like, well, what does it look like in there? Have you checked? And I'm like, oh, I didn't know I was supposed to. <laughs> well, I checked and my, my bees were gone. Um, I thought at the time that they had left, that they had flown off to find a new home, but mo more likely they actually died from some disease or um, might attack and uh, unfortunately lost that hive. So I knew that I couldn't try again until I got some solid education and a mentor who would walk me through the process uh, with more care and, and attention. And that opportunity came in 2020 in the midst of pandemic when I really turned my attention back to this garden. Um, that was the time when, you know, working this land, working with uh, the life that's here at my home became a really intricate part, not only of um, my just home life, but also of my spiritual practice. And working with the garden um, was brought into the work with Reiki more explicitly. Um, and in that process, I started thinking that maybe I could once again commit some attention to raising bees because I felt really called uh, to have them here. Um, I just, I just love them as a being. They are so fascinating. Um, I've been learning so much about them and working with them, developing meditation practices specifically to work with bees. Um, I'm going to begin uh, doing that with other folks here on this property now that this new hive is set up. Um, and there's just quite a bit of, of magic and incredible biology associated with beekeeping. So I knew it was something that I wanted to try again. And as these things happen, when you focus your attention on something, set an intention about it, um, oftentimes our, our actions are brought in line with that intention and we move towards it and things move more quickly. And so I connected with um, a woman a uh, beekeeper who worked with my best friend who's a farmer and uh, we worked out an agreement for um, me helping her with some things and her helping me to learn how to keep bees. And so I was fortunate to be able to adopt a hive from a friend of hers who was moving away and couldn't take his hive with him and just you know it was already all set up there was a ton of honey in it already to go and I was able to just take over the maintenance of this hive, this well-established hive. And there were advantages and disadvantages of that. Um, one of the advantages was that, uh, well, it was full of honey. So I was able to have a pretty good harvest um, pretty quickly and still leave plenty of honey for the bees to have over winter so that I didn't have to feed them sugar water over winter, which is a common practice. Um, there, you know, all of the equipment was, was, came with it. Um, it was a hive that was already known to be very docile and easy to work with. And that was all wonderful. There were some disadvantages to adopting that hive. Um, I didn't get to work with them um, kind of from start, from the start. Um, and there were some ways in which uh, the previous owner had maintained the hive with respect to maintaining mite populations and um, other like defensive strategies against the various predators that can um, infiltrate a hive um, practices that the previous owner had used that I didn't I didn't know what he was using um, and was choosing to manage these things differently and you know as is often the case if you change a management system for a complex living system um, that has had that same management system for a long time there can be problems that arise uh, change is not always, you know, sudden change especially is not always a good thing for a complex system. And so without going into all of the, the details, um, over time, the, this change in the, in the system uh, resulted in a, a buildup of mites and eventually um, weakening the hive to the point where they were susceptible to robber bees who came in and basically basically slaughtered my hive of bees. It was a very sad scene when I opened up the hive. Um, 
to discover what had happened. Um, and so, you know, on, on the one hand, that was very discouraging. Um, I'm sure that you've had moments when you really put your heart into something and were really trying to learn something well um, and really had high hopes for it and experienced a failure. Um, I've, I've made previous videos in the garden, um, in the, in the garden series on the topic of failure and on the topic of the way in which the garden has been teaching me since I returned to her, uh, to confront failure and to relate to it in a different way than I had before. Um, I've lived on this property almost 12 years. We gardened from the, from the beginning, had tons of failure because it was a new climate than what we were used to when we moved here. Um, and just got so discouraged that I gave up gardening entirely for years. Um, and when I turned back to it, I knew that I had to have a different relationship with failure. Um, because, you know, living systems are complex and things die all the time. <laughs> and adjusting to, um, you know, all of the many factors that are at play when um, fostering life in any way you know, will inevitably bring failure. So my high failure felt like a big one to me at the time. Um, it was about a year and a half uh, after I had gotten it. So I had it through the winter and then through, um, I had it for a full year and then into the next summer. Um, and, you know, again, my bee mentor assured me that that's actually not a bad run for a first try. Uh, and that, you know, very experienced beekeepers lose hives all the time. They're just an incredibly uh, fragile, vulnerable species. Um, the honeybee, the European honeybee that we um, rely on for that role. And so I shouldn't take it too bad. I shouldn't be too hard on myself was the message there. So I knew that I was going to try again um, at the next opportunity rather than waiting years like I did before. And so that next opportunity is the spring. Um, cause you definitely don't want to establish a new hive going into fall and winter. Uh, this is the time to do it. And so I spent the winter doing just more learning, more research about, you know, beekeeping and, um, you know, putting certain things into place. And here I am trying again. So, um, this is something that I'll continue to share as, uh, anything interesting happens related to the bees. And I really look forward to uh, working with them um, as a point of connection between the in the garden part of what I share with you all on this channel and the Reiki part of what I share on this channel. I mentioned that um, one of the things that drew me to having bees on this property is the, the way in which they it can actually help to facilitate meditation and spiritual practice. There's something incredibly powerful about observing and being with a hive of bees that is thriving and is doing its work. Um, everything from the sound of the bees, that, that gentle humming that's, that's gentle, but also powerful and, and, you know, kind of, uh, intense in a certain way. Um, the, the pattern in which the, which they move, right? The, both in a certain way random but also predictable pattern with which they move in and out of the hive as they're doing their work and just the incredible complexity of their social system uh, of of bees as a as a collective organism you know when we look at reiki as a practice that helps us to remember the wholeness of our true self and helps us to remember our inherent interconnectedness with all of life um you know, these are the lessons that that Reiki is bringing us to in a variety of ways over and over again. An organism like a honeybee, um, a collective or organism like the honeybee, really becomes a tangible physical representation of that. Um, honeybees behave as a single organism, as an interconnected web. Um, I think honeybees and and mushrooms with the mycelial web underneath the ground are for me, you know, two of the most tangible representations of the interconnection of life. And this is true on biological levels and on spiritual levels. And for me, 
the intersection of those things is where it gets good. Like that is where I am the most excited and interested, where I do my teaching, where I do my own practice is that place where the biological reality of our life and our world and our planet and the planets beyond this planet um, have a tangible synergy and a tangible reflection in certain spiritual experiences. And, you know, bees and Reiki to me absolutely are that. They are completely synergistic with each other. And so I um, plan to share as well some of the, the bee uh, meditation and bee practices that I developed last year and never got a chance to share. And hopefully that'll, that'll be interesting. Um, if you're in the area, I'll be doing um, offering some of that here in person uh, if that is of interest. So I'll keep you appraised on that. For now, I'm going to sit here and just gaze at these bees for a little while while they get themselves oriented to this new place. I'm going to share some Reiki with them as I have been since I picked them up earlier today and just let them know that I'm here to help them, that, that I'm a friend and that I'm going to do, do my very best even when I make mistakes, even if I fail. So I hope that you'll come along for that journey with me. Uh, if you want to be sure to get updates on this journey, on this process, um, uh, be sure to subscribe and request notifications. You'll know when I upload new videos and join this conversation. If you are a more experienced beekeeper than me, please let me know how you're doing. Uh, if you have a favorite YouTube channel or other resources around beekeeping, please share them in the comments. I'd love to have more sources of education that I can turn to. Um, and any questions that you have about my particular experience, again, not intended as instruction because I am learning, um, but definitely intended as uh, an exchange that we can have here. So have a great rest of your day, wherever you go for the rest of your day, whether or not it involves bees, may you be deeply provisioned. And I'll see you in the next video, which should be this hive install. So join me again. Thanks a lot. Until next time. I love you. Goodbye.